Welcome back into the Blacksburg Buzz. A big win for the Hokies in California today. 31-7. to They defeat the Stanford Cardinal. A big win for Virginia Tech. Bouncing back after a brutal loss. Just stripped away from them at the last moment in Miami. And it this is just a good win for the Hokies. You get back to 500. And it's a great stepping stone into the next couple games on the schedule. I really like where Tech is headed after the last two weeks. They're just playing much more put-together, complete football games than they were for the first four weeks of the season. They really looked like an incomplete team with just a lot of miscues and bad moments, no matter who they were playing. And while there's still hints of that, they've definitely pulled things together. They're playing much better overall. And it's a lot closer to the team that we predicted it could be over the offseason. They're not quite there yet. They've got a ton more work to do if they want to get there. But they're making strides in the right direction. And that's something that you've got to appreciate at the very least. They're making strides and stepping into the right direction. Just a much better group than we saw two, three, four, five weeks ago. Now, before we get more into this Stanford game, let's talk about today's video sponsor, Bet Online. Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads to bet on during the games. Think you know your stuff? Get in on our $200,000 mega contest and pick five games against the spread every week for your chance at weekly prizes and a share of 200k when the game's over head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games head to the website today to get in on the action then online the game starts here now the Hokies looked really solid like right from the beginning of this game they were playing well they a little bit rough on defense initially, but when it came down to the big moments, they locked down, and that was huge. Stanford had to start backup quarterback Justin Lampson in this game, and I don't think Lampson played a terrible game, but just definitely didn't seem super prepared for this one. He did cause a few issues with his legs. We've said it in multiple different videos, but mobile quarterbacks is something that Virginia Tech has their trouble with. So in addition to Lampson causing a few issues with his legs, but nothing too, too bad, Stanford put up a really good first drive. They got within the 30, so clearly at field goal range and knocking on the door of a touchdown, it didn't really look like the defense was slowing them down all too much. You know, you break up a couple passes here or there, or you hold a run for short yardage, but Stanford moved up the field pretty well in their first drive, and then Tech just locked it down once they got in the 30. They hit that 30, and then Caleb Spencer, a tackle for loss for one yard, and Peebles, a five-yard sack, and all of a sudden, Stanford is back on the 35, so you still got a good field goal shot, but they're in a brutal spot to make a go for it. So they end up trying to kick the field goal, and they miss it left. He pulled it left and missed it, so a big stop for Virginia Tech on the first drive. Now, don't get me wrong, they caught a break there with the missed field goal, probably should have made that one, but you'll take every missed opportunity from your opponents that you can get. And even just preventing the touchdown there was big. They locked it down when it mattered the most. Now on Virginia Tech's first drive, that was beautiful. I loved the play calling there. It Just everything was working. Mixing Jalen Lane all around the field, getting tooting a few touches here or there. So you've got Jalen Lane going left, he's going right. You go to tooting a couple of times. Then you take a deep shot to Felton to mix it up. Now, weren't able to land it there. Drones just a hair too far out ahead of Felton. He's 
overthrown Felton a couple times on those, but this one was really close. I think it might have even hit him on the fingertips. It was just barely too far out there. And if Felton would have got that ball, would have been some big yardage. But after that, they go back to lane, mix it up. They send him on a run, and he gets quite a few yards, puts Tech right up, knocking on the door. They're, I believe, around the 15 at this point. And just a great play call to get Steven Gosnell open right over the center of the field. Nobody's on him. He's got a couple yards to each side to spare, and Drones just finds him perfectly. A great, easy first drive for the Hokies to put a touchdown on the board. And when they score early, they're a great team. And they've been doing that lately. So a great start to this game. You're feeling really confident. You had that missed field goal from Stanford. And then a really comfortable first drive from Tech leads you to a touchdown without too much opposition. Now the Hokies kick it off. and. This was a brutal call here, but on special teams, Elijah Clock gets hit with a no helmet on penalty. His helmet falls off during the play. He makes a move to go pick it up, and the ball carrier is coming towards him, so he forgets about the helmet and goes in with the pile to try and tackle the guy, and he gets a flag called because he's involved in the play without his helmet on. It's a it's a weird rule, but come on, guys. You you gotta you can't make those mistakes. It didn't end up meaning anything in the game, but it's those those small, brutal mistakes that have really compounded for tech over the last couple of games. And you want to see those stop happening. But it didn't end up mattering at all. You still don't want to see something like that going down. And they keep happening over and over and over. One area that the Hokies really, really need to improve on. Now, Stanford with the ball back, they put together another pretty solid drive. They're marching up the field. They took a deep shot that Mansoor Delane swatted out of the hands of the receiver. That was a big time play. It Might have been a touchdown if you would have caught it. Definitely would have been probably around like the five-yard line at the very worst for Stanford. So a fantastic swat there from Delane to break up that play. But Stanford ended up getting all the way up pretty much to the goal line. And, you know, the defense having those issues. They're letting up some yards here or there. But once again, they come in clutch when it matters most. Mose Phillips just punches the ball out and APR picks it up for the fumble right on the doorstep of the end zone. I think they're on like the two yard line at this point and fumble recovered by the Hokies. Huge play for them. So Tech goes up the field and they're starting to make some pretty solid progress. They're getting around the 30 yard line or so, and you get into a fourth and one situation. And I love what they did here. And it shows that the team is starting to figure things out. We saw a couple weeks ago, it was a fourth and three and the fake field goal that just didn't work out. And this time, what is the play call? They give it to Basil Tootin this time. And what does he do? He powers through on the fourth and one and gets the touchdown. I mean, come on. Like, that is fantastic. I love that. That's exactly what we wanted to see last time. It didn't work out. Tried to do a little bit too much. And you know you've got a great running back in Basil Tootin. You're in a perfect opportunity. You give him the ball, he gets you a couple yards, and he gets you the touchdown, too, on the same play. That is what I love to see. It's just the progression, making better play calls. We saw it happen last season. It was a struggle early on, and they put it together as the season progressed. And it seems like they're doing the same thing this year. With so many guys returning, 
you would have hoped that there wasn't this learning curve that happened like last year where you've got to get comfortable with everyone and learn what's working, what's not working. But at the very least, things seem to be working now for Virginia Tech. And I love this play call. You just give it to Tootin, let him get the yard because he's a dog and that's what he's going to do. And that's exactly what he did. He got you the yard and he got into the end zone too, which is just more icing on top of the cake. But great job here from Tech all around. I love this move for the Hokies. At this point, they've built a pretty comfortable lead, 14-0 already, and they just kept piling on the points. Stanford didn't score until pretty late in the game with a touchdown pass, and it was a fantastic catch from the receiver, just barely keeping those feet in, just dragging the toes. An amazing catch to get those seven points for the Cardinal. But other than that, Virginia Tech looked really solid. They were playing great defense against Stanford. Obviously, not scoring any points till really late in the game is pretty huge. Holding them to seven total is huge as well. But they just weren't moving the ball too great, and the defense locked it down when they needed to. Overall, when you're looking at the stat leaders, you've got Drones, 14 for 19 on his passing attempts. He was very efficient today, just making the easy reads, and that was big. 201 yards, two touchdowns. When you look at Tootin, you've got 21 carries for 73 yards and a touchdown. Quan Felton, four receptions, 84 yards and a touchdown. He was a lot more active than we've seen in a couple of the last weeks. And especially after that catch got overturned in the Miami game, it's really nice to see Felton have a pretty solid game with those 84 yards, the touchdown. He was active. He was making some big plays and definitely making his presence known as, as a receiver. There was also Steven Gosnell. He had that touchdown that I mentioned, three receptions for 53 yards. He has been so solid for Virginia Tech this year. He just gets open a lot. He doesn't demand as tight of coverage as a guy like maybe Jalen Lane. He isn't getting those crazy electric plays all the time, but he did have that one diving catch, which was awesome in an earlier game at Virginia Tech this season. And then he's just always open and he keeps the sticks moving. Gosnell has been fantastic. He's just such a reliable option for the receiving core, and I'm really happy to see him having a good season. And then, of course, Jalen Lane, only three receptions for 29 yards, which frankly shocked me because I thought he had a ton more than that, at least in the receiving game. But he had a good game for not that much stat production, if I'm being honest. He did have one 24-yard rush to add on to that, so you're looking at just over 50 yards, but it felt like a lot more out of him, and he's been another great option for the Hokies. Really asserted himself as one of their best receivers, if not their best, and he's been great on special teams too, really doing it all for Tech. And then looking at the defense, Keontae Jenkins, a 13-yard interception, Caleb Spencer, three tackles for loss, a total of 12 yards, and forced a fumble, and then the most Phillips fumble that APR recovered right on the doorstep of the end zone. The defense did a great job today. They were playing really well. Fuga had a nasty sack, too, near the end of the game. Just good stuff all around from this crew. You got to see a little more discipline from a lot of different areas, offense and defense. And you want to see the lines make a couple steps in the right direction as well. But overall, they're playing pretty solid as a group. And you want to see this continue into the next couple of games. Because if they can keep this momentum, build off of it a little bit more, you're probably going to be in a good position. As I mentioned a minute ago, Virginia Tech, they're pulling things together. Back-to-back -back solid weeks. Only 500 in those two games and 500 on the season. But back-to-back -back weeks where they played well and looked like a good team. They're just starting to 
put all the pieces together and finally figure things out. It feels like every season Virginia Tech fans are just waiting for the team to finally figure it out. And at some point they do. You just wish it wouldn't take so long to get to this point. One other thing I got to mention today is Vanderbilt beat Alabama 40 to 35. What is going on? This might be the craziest college football week I have ever seen. So many ranked teams losing. Undefeated number one Alabama losing to Vanderbilt. This is outrageous. I mean, fantastic for the Hokies because their loss looks infinitely better than it did six hours ago. That is one of the craziest things I've ever seen in college football in my entire life. Vanderbilt just doesn't beat teams like Alabama, especially undefeated Alabama. That beat Georgia last week. An unreal week for college football and very, very interesting in the grand scheme of things.